Hi, welcome back to the follow-up video on uh, MicroLogics, CompactLogics, PicoLogics. And what we're going to do now is uh, I'll show you how I test the 1769OW16 relay output module. Now this is a 16 relay output. Um, it's supposed to have a maximum continuous amps of 2.5 or a uh, 1 amp at 125 volts DC. Now I've got a customer that sent me two of them in the past couple of years. The same relay has died. It's relay number four. Now I thought that was a little strange so because he keeps sending me these, and he's a good, good customer for this and other things, I decided I'd buy some and I got four in from a supplier. Uh, they were obviously used, um, but in really nice clean condition. And I put them on the test bench, tr wired them up to 24 volt pilot lights, which I'll show you here shortly. And on three out of the four, they had dead relays. Now this one is one that I got from my supply, and relay number four is dead on it. The other two, I have relay 4 and 5 are dead, and relay 3, 4, and 5. And the one my customer sent me, which is the one that I've got pulled apart here, as you can see, tiny little relays in it, relay number 4 is dead in this one. So, it kind of makes you wonder, is there a problem with how these are put together with that side of the board and particularly relay number four because it's the same one and these are from two different locations on the planet so things are a little weird and uh, it's going to take a little more uh, research so anyhow um, what I'll do is I'll just kind of swing around here get the camera positioned better so that you can see the bench and uh, test lights and how I've got it programmed and uh, I'll show you the te test procedure on the good one and on two of the different uh, dead ones that I've got there with dead relays. So be right back. Okay, here we are back. So here's our setup. I've got a MicroLogix with an LSP processor on it and it's plugged into a 24 AWA which is AC input and re 16 relay outputs and then on the end I've got the OW16. Now this is the good one. Obviously uh, everything here is pre-tested pre so that's why I brought it up. So all I've done in the program is a little flasher circuit that uh, takes and makes everything flash on and off. So I just turn that on, toggle the bit, and I'm not sure if the microphone's good enough to pick that up, but it's uh, you can hear everything going on and off. I've got these ones and these ones. So if we look up at the uh, board here, there's our 24-volt uh, LED uh, pilot lights and they're just going on and off uh, three quarters of a second on three quarters of a second off and just continuous so as you can see and the the nice thing which I've mentioned before in my other videos I always try and have a load not just turn it on and off and put a meter across this way you can physically see it and you know that yes it's going to carry a load so let's just swing back down here to the processor we will turn off the noisy relays, toggle a bit, and there it is off. Now to change the, uh, I've got these three here, and to change a module on this, you first must power it down, because as with Slick 500, these things will fault as soon as there's any changes. Now, 
I have the uh, wiring arm screwed down so that uh, there is no possibility of loose connections which has happened in the past. You unlock the end cap and it slides off. You move the locking lever over, over and it take it off gently. That one we know is good. This one when I tested it before it says 3, 4, and 5 are dead. So, slide it on. Curbly, like if this was mounted on the panel, it would be in there tight. Make sure that your locking lever is over, because what that does when you move the locking lever is this connects it to the bus in here, which is power and communication. Move it back and it's off. Now you have to put the uh, end cap back on. If you don't put it on, the processor will fault and not run. And it'll give you an error that it's uh, it has a problem. So it starts up, and it starts up fairly quick in this particular this time. And we go back online because we're offline. And of course, because this is Slick 500 software, which also does the MicroLogics, it's, uh, it's not the greatest. So, there we are there. And we'll turn on and there it is flashing. We will hook up the wiring arm. Again, it's, it's always a good practice to screw it down. So, there we are. It's all ready. It's flashing away. Now, we go straight up. And in this case, we have four different relays. We had, oh, that's correct, 0, 3, 4, and 5 are all dead but they're working on the on the lights on the output the relays are trying to work but they're obviously burnt out so they've seen a heavy load at some point so that's pretty obvious that one needs some some work again we we'll power it down and let's go and we'll just do one more and, and call it a day Really not a fan of Phillips screws either, but let's say life is gone. Take that one off and uh, bring it down here. So this one says four and five are dead. do this quickly if you're in a production situation and you've got to change these out as you can see it doesn't take too long but you're still going to suffer some downtime okay that's down there plug it back in and uh, we just fire straight up because we're still in the same mode. We bring this back up. 
and as you can see this one has relay 4 and 5 is dead so oh what the hell it's only uh, or what the heck uh, it's only a little bit here we'll just do the last one so again power it down because now I've uh, checked with one company and it's going to cost more to have these repaired than it is to uh, source another one so these are going to end up in the recycle bin and especially now that I've seen how they're put to, together and the fact that it's tiny little stuff in there which my big old hands are not going to handle that well so there we go and plug in the arm once you get it down three or four turns you know that you're in there snug one up all the way, repower it, and there it is up and running. So, and we'll just go back up. And as you can see, output number four is dead. So like I said before, this this makes it rather suspicious when I've got ones from different locations, different suppliers, and now output four is not working. Now it's not. So yeah, that one's really in bad shape. Um, it shows that their output four there may be something in the manufacturing of these modules that is giving us strange things. If you've uh, had these fail. I'd be interested to hear in the comments whether or not it's output three, two, three, four, or five, or on that side of the the module that fails on a consistent basis. There may be something uh, in the manufacturing that Radwell, not Radwell, Rockwell, has missed. Anyhow, there we go. Uh, like I say, I'm not a fan of uh, MicroLogix Compact Logix. Um, because of these uh, light duty components they use and it's cost effective in this case as far as my personal opinion is just cheap um, I wouldn't recommend them so come back often uh, subscribe it if you'd like and I guess you can click that little bell thing and uh, get a notification when I uh, post new videos thanks a lot have a great day and enjoy life bye